Oh my. You have to watch this bowl a little bit. Jack wagon. Oh yeah, he's got some gnarly horns. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Crossroads Bison. Welcome back to the channel. I want to thank Helix for sponsoring today's video. Today we've got a lot going on. Uh, as you can tell here, got a new H brace. Actually, it's a refurbished H brace. You guys know that I've been hustling, working on this fence. Um, just came down here and uh, set an H brace for uh, the Ponderosa here, still on pasture three. So speaking of that, I've had some recommendations from some of you guys about uh, kind of an overview. And I'm talking about these pastures and I've been working on this fence and, and, and all you see is the ground level. But some of you have been asking about really, how does this land lay out and everything? And you really want to see maybe uh, an aerial view. So we're going to do that for you today. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you kind of how our pastures are lined out, at least on our front, um, maybe 90 acres, 80 acres. So I want to talk to you about that. Uh, the other thing is we are going to go visit the Dunbar herd. Um, Kevin uh, told me he has caught Eleanor's little bull and has got him back with the other bulls. So we're going to go check on them and see the whole herd. And we'll check on Eleanor's bull, see if he's uh, behaving. Then we're going to bring you back to the Ponderosa. And we're going to show you uh, what's going on with the uh, camper. Um, and a kind of update on that since that's been a while. So, uh, so follow us along, guys. Oh, oh yeah. I just need a wheelbarrow of that sucker. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's heavy. Oh, man. You got a new package in the mail or yeah. what, man? I'm sure the mail delivery guys were not happy with me. Sucker's all there. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Woo. dust on the package but doesn't matter because what's inside it's gonna change how you sleep it's gonna change how I sleep it's gonna change how Marissa and I sleep in the bison camper oh by the way guys the last time you saw the camper it was down in the pasture well it got so hot obviously and we don't want to leave it out there because well, there are critters and things in nature that can cause problems and get up in your stuff. So we brought the camper up here and we've had it in the barn. Plus we've got power. You can hear the AC going. So yes, we stay the night here sometimes. We hang out here in the evenings and it's a cool place for Brooks to hang out uh, and for us to hang out when it's so hot and we're working and whatnot. So we got a Helix mattress here. There's a mattress inside. Cole and I are going to get rid of, and we're going to put this in. <laughs> there we go. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. Everybody's different and Helix knows that. So they made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to make the perfect mattress for you. They have something for everyone's unique taste and if you sleep with a partner, you can even take the sleep quiz together and find something that's the perfect compromise for the both of you. And that's what Marissa and I did. Based on Marissa and I results, Helix matched us with the Dusk Lux mattress. With your Helix sleep mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial, along with a 10 year warranty, and there are financing options and flexible payment plans. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. The best part about all this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. I love my Helix, and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click on the link below. Go to helixsleep.com backslash cross timbers. 
for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep Mattress plus two free pillows. Whew. Man, I can stay in here for a while. Oh, I just sunk it. Can't lay here too long. We got fence to build. We gotta go see the Dunbar herd. We got fence to build. We got bison to tend to. More fence to build. Some more fence to build. <laughs> uh, if I laid here too much longer, I won't get up. This is awesome. I can't wait to spend more time on it. Thank you again, Helix, for sponsor today's video. This, uh, this is one of the nicest mattresses I've ever had and nicest pillows ever. Most comfortable ever. Thank you, guys. Time to go back to work. Thanks for the help, Cole. Good man. All right, so here is kind of an explanation of how this land is laid out. Uh, well, just the front half is really laid out uh, what we're currently working on and been working on. Let me show you what's going on. Let's get the drone up. I've already talked to you about pasture one and two. Pasture two is the one that had the new fence I brought you along on. I cleared out an entire quarter mile stretch of mostly cedar trees between me and my neighbor. And then we put up a new six wire fence on that. And currently we have the yearlings in pasture two. They haven't been in there very long. And then in pasture one is where Big Joe and his ladies and two calves are currently. Uh, pasture one also has part of the barn and the corral system all of that in basically pasture one. So pasture one is not a full 20 acres like pasture two is. Also, uh, when I talk about kind of the central location or or the holding area, is this area right here. So just you pull into the property through our big entry and through the gate. This is kind of a holding area. It's a center uh, sort of pivot between pasture one and two where we can bring the animals in uh, if we want to uh, put them in the corral and, and, or just let them graze in here in this area. Our project has really been focused on pasture three and four. Take a look at pasture three. Pasture three is the fence that I just finished. Kevin helped me kind of wrap it up, tying it all together and putting all the clips on it. So pasture three also has, an, um, has a neighbor to my south, which is covered in a lot of trees and we are currently working on that fence. Basically, this is a 40 acre lot and we've been talking to NRCS and uh, hopefully next year, if we get approved, hopefully we'll be able to cross section this 40 acre pasture and divide it into another pasture, 20 and 20, which would be pasture three and four. So right now it's basically an open 40 acres of the current fencing that we're working on. In this 40 acres, there are two ponds. One that is holding water, which will be in pasture three, and then another pond in pasture four, which is currently dry. Unfortunately, it is part of it, which does bring concerns to pasture four. Pasture three pond has been holding water steady, but pasture four uh, obviously has not and has gone completely dry. If you keep hearing me talk about trying to get the bison in more land uh, we knew when we bought this land um, that uh, the fencing was not good and we have to uh, slowly replace all the fencing right now um, obviously we're battling with the very hot and dry conditions so we typically only work early in the mornings and in the evenings and uh, i work a little bit in between on the skid steer just because it has ac in it so pastures three and four will hopefully eventually come into play when we cross divide it. So right now it's basically uh, one big pasture, uh, but we just finished this fence. And then right behind pasture three and four, or this open 40 acres, is our halfway nine acres is what, is what we call it. Take a look at this pond here. This pond is getting dry. Um, it, it's holding some water, but it's not completely dry yet. This is what we call the halfway nine. And this is basically, it's a halfway point um, kind of in between the land that we own because the land that, this land here at the Ponderosa, it's kind of an odd shape. It's almost like a an L shape or backwards Z shape uh, type of land. 
so the halfway point the halfway nine acre lot here that is another one that we will work on once we get this 40 acre lot done from there we will transition further into the ponderosa land of building more and more fence but now we're just trying to hustle to get these bison out here I'll give you guys a little bit here not your normal stuff but give you a little oh something makes you feel old when you cut it short What do you want? She just looks good. There's a couple of them in here that we raised. Some of these, uh, they're yearlings now, but um, some of these are part of those Texas calves that we uh, purchased last uh, November. Uh, some of those calves we brought over and they're yearlings now and then some of them are the ones we raised so let's uh let's go see uh eleanor's bull you have to watch this bull a little bit he's uh this is one of them texas this is texas bull he's got some gnarly horns there's the like escapee look at him jack wagon oh yeah so what i did was I pulled through here and he was must have been hiding right here. I pulled in and straight through with my trailer and he must have been hiding here because there wasn't much light. It's like five o'clock in the morning. And he just snuck right through here and took off that way. And so I shut the gate and uh, I had one more in here and so I Walked over there, shook the bucket, took some feed to try to get his attention, thinking he would come back, and he uh, he definitely didn't. He took off, and I saw him in Mom and Kevin's front yard, and I was shaking the bucket, and I shined my light on him, and he was jumping and kicking, and he was excited. He, he was smelling freedom for sure. But I, I, like I said in my last video, if he went this way, if he went north, that's where the county road is and uh, we would have a big problem but luckily you know, i was shaking the bucket it was getting him excited and whatnot well he took off behind mom and kevin's house and went south towards the dunbar herd which was where i needed him to go because that is basically uh, my way of getting him in so we uh <laughs> i just opened the gate for him and he went in because uh, the thing is, if one gets out, um, I, I don't stress as much because they always want back with their family. They want back with, uh, you know, some bison. And uh, he hasn't been with them since he was seven months old. You know, that's been a long time. And he's two years old now. So if you get two or three out, you're in trouble because they're in a group together. They're happy. They're fine together. Uh, but the fact that he was just by himself, the only guy that got out. Anyways, oh, Eleanor's bull. I may keep him and sell him as a two-year-old bull. So he's a good-looking bull. He actually surprised me. I didn't. I wasn't sure what he's going to be because he's Eleanor's bull. But I may take him and sell him as a two-year-old bull. He is a product of a Dunbar. Dunbar and Eleanor. And this is Eleanor's only calf we've had. Or offspring, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. He's not a bad looking bull. He's a great looking bull. Yeah. He's a character for sure. He took after his mom. But I was just happy to get him back in. And then, so what happened is um, Kevin texted me yesterday and said uh, that he caught him. So that's why I'm here is to come, come see how he's doing and stuff and make sure he wasn't whipped around too bad. But <laughs> I'm sure they settled down after he was in there for a day. I knew the cows and Dunbar were gonna run him around. And so I knew he had 
he'd it, they'd eventually chill out. But Kevin, what he did is he probably opened up uh, another paddock, and then you can open up a gate, and he will come in. They'll come up because he's so curious. They'll come up to the front to the old original corral, and they smell around. And Kevin may have fed him, uh, but. Bulls like Kim are way too curious, so I'm sure when he came up, Kevin uh, ran and shut the gate and then ran him over here. So I'm glad Kevin got him back at least in here and where he belongs and not with the Dunbar herd because there probably would be eventually problems because it is breeding season right now. So. All right, now that uh, we've checked up here on Eleanor's bull, let's go down and actually see his mom and dad and see the Dunbar herd. Let's go. Here we go. flowers. Hey buddy. It's not red dog season, it's black dog season. <laughs> Oh my, Kevin will be... All right, guys, we're out here with uh, the best of the best right here, the original herd, Dunbar herd. Now he's going to poop right in front of us. I guess that's uh, how he feels about us, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Dunbar. Does that mean we need to get out of your pasture? <laughs> Come on, I was just talking about you, man. Just bragging on you. Come on. Come on. Dunbar. He's probably mad at me because I've been hanging out with Big Joe a little more. But um, anyways. No, while we're over here, uh, I did want to talk about um, these three babies. And I know I've mentioned it several times, but we won't know who these three babies belong to um, as far as the sire, as far as the dad. We won't know whose they are until we pull hair samples, just like Doc talked about with the uh, NABR the North American Bison Registry. Um, when we pull the hair on them uh, here this fall, when we work all these animals, we can track back and, and see who the, the dad is, whether it's uh, Dunbar or uh, or Big Joe. We won't know. But um, just coming out here, looking around and, and talking to Doc, actually, he's had some cows um, that bred late. And, and the reason I say that is like Quapaw here, uh, when you look at her belly and how low it sits, she looks pregnant. And uh, because uh, she may not have been accepting a Big Joe in the first round of that uh, breeding season, so last July when Big Joe was in here and we moved Dunbar up, she may not have uh, been cycling or she may not have taken Big Joe like we've learned since his fertility is good. She may not have taken him. And uh, so now, because she looks pregnant, it makes me think, well, maybe she came in heat later 
and then he possibly bred her because she sort of looks pregnant to me and um, her woman parts are showing some signs of being pregnant. She may not be pregnant, but to me it looks a little bit uh, like she is. So we may have uh, some late born babies and I would rather have a baby than not a baby at all because you know, if, if, you're a, if you're a livestock owner of goats, sheep, um, pigs, cows, whatever it is, if you uh, don't have offspring, you can't make the money to pay your bills or, and all those things. So the fact that we only have three out here is frustrating. And, and we've learned that he is fertile, Big Joe is fertile, but we've, I've learned that um, through Doc that some of these cows just may not accept them. And then I've done some research since then and paid attention to some other things where even in Yellowstone, um, cows sometimes don't take a, the bull or dominant bull. And, and so even in nature, or in a pasture that's uh, occurring. And I'm learning that obviously because we only have three uh, out of eight uh, potential calves here at uh, the original place at Dunbar Place. So I don't know, we, uh, it's just all a learning curve for us and um, we just have to learn from it and, and grow. But the good thing is, is that Big Joe is fertile. So we're glad that that is, uh, is happening. But uh, they're all doing great. I still have the feeder out here um still got the green bulk feeder uh, just trying to help keep them flushed or, or keep them healthy um one it's super dry you can see there's not a lot left out here um kevin's been putting out hay for him and uh the feed helps uh during this these dry conditions uh to keep these animals healthy and uh, unfortunately we do have to put out hay right now um, for the Big Joe herd and for the Dunbar herd. And so uh, Kevin's been helping out over here and, and, and doing a lot for me since I've been hustling with the fence at the Ponderosa. Um, but uh, all, they're all doing good. The calves look good. And um, I'm just gonna take a look around and look at these females to see if uh, some of them are possibly pregnant. Uh, because even if it's delayed, which, uh, which is not what you want, if, if they're born late, that's okay. I'd, I'd rather have calves this year uh, than not at all. So she's always been a big cow, but the, the real sign is when their vulvas start to bounce. And you can see her nipples a little bit. So I think she may be pregnant. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, so she's had a baby ever since I bought her because I bought her um, pregnant as a two-year-old bred heifer. Um, but Kit had her baby, Bell Star had her baby, and uh, who else had the baby? Peaches. Peaches had her baby. Look at the little red dog. Pretty much turning to be a black dog now. Yeah, so we'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could possibly take nine adults over there. Man, she looks good. Peaches, that's Peaches. Good looking cow. There's Flo. Oh my gosh. No, wait. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understand a little bit more about uh, how the ponderosa is broke up. And a lot of it is what has they've naturally done. And part of it is what already has occurred here. We're just going off of what is existing. Yes, we've had to do uh, some fence uh, building and whatnot. But a lot of it, uh, when you've got a perfect 80 acres, you know, on the, on the front half of this ponderosa, um, you can pretty much build off of that and all you got to do is put the work in with the fencing and that's what we're doing. Go to helix.com backslash cross timbers for up to $200 off your Helix mattress.
plus two free pillows, free shipping within the US.